once again, it's been a little while again, but it's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Tournament. One reason it's been a little while is I get a lot of balls in the air, sometimes I forget to catch one of them, or uh, many of them, and this was such a case. One of the reasons that it was kind of difficult to um, catch the ball is it, it, was a, it was a rather large ball. I would have had to learn a complicated game, a uh, new sort of game, uh, for what I was planning on doing next. Um, and here is where this type of game comes in. Now, uh, if you are interested in music, you probably don't always listen to your favorite song all the time, or your favorite songs all the time. There's probably, for you, or at least that's the case for me, there are certain songs that work for certain occasions. Um, there's Packable's Canon, which is oftentimes played during weddings, for example. You might not love Packable's Canon, but maybe you play it during your wedding because it serves that ritual purpose where it fits that certain time. Um, the Impossible Machine is the game we're going to be playing today. It's one such game. I've actually never played it before, um, but the rules are really simple, and it definitely fits the engineering occasion which is the occasion we're going to be doing now. So it's, it's, it seems useful and appropriate to me to have um, games that aren't necessarily my favorite games in my collection, just for different occasions like this. And so let's dive into it. We have our engineering suits, and this is actually probably more appropriate than the game I was playing anyway. So let's go into the Impossible Machine. As I said, I've yet to play the game, I've yet to even look at the cards, but I can tell you right now that the game is going to be pretty simple. That's my belief anyway. The rules seem very simple, and it doesn't seem like there's much to it. So players are going to have six cards in their hand to start out with. And the important thing is it's not the picture so much, though I think that's probably where the appeal of the game comes in, is these little things on the, the end here. And so basically you're matching those up. So on your turn, everyone's going to be playing into the same machine. Um, you can play one to three cards, and you're just trying to get as many cards into the machine as possible. That means you helped with the machine the most. And then um, players are going to be doing that as soon as there's at least four cards in there. Um, someone can play, uh, let's see, okay, a card with a star like that is going to complete the machine. So once someone plays that, say, I know this isn't really a machine. That's actually a cancellation card, but ignore that right now. Once someone plays that, then subsequent turns, these are going to be turned over, and that, that, that's the machine running. And once they're all turned over, you score whatever cards are in the machine. So the goal is to get as many of your cards in the machine as possible. We do three machines, the person with the most points, which is determined by colors of cards you put into the machine, is the winner. Um, and we'll do you know first, second, third, fourth, fifth as we usually do in our careers track. <laughs> look, at, look what happens to the game after months of neglect. So here's the exciting first turn. Curly played these three cards. See how they all connect. Um, recycle, recycle, up, up, and then we have it down. So let's take a look at the machine. I think it's important to enjoy this game to actually pull back and look at the machine. It's kind of Rube Goldberg-esque. Uh, you have the ball going down here hitting this, which I guess causes this to turn, and then the turning makes the hook go up, and then that fish bumps this thing, and then when that raises, that makes it fall, I guess, and that surprises the squirrel, and the squirrel's gonna drop this nut, so we'll see what happens next. It's gonna be Twigmar's turn. He gets to decide what's going to happen with this. Now, players can also insert cards in there as long as it matches the thing, the the symbols. So it's pretty pretty plastic what you can do with the machine. So Twigmar had an interesting decision to make. He could have actually catalyzed the whole thing, which would have um, guaranteed Curly the first place on this this first round, the most points, but. He he would have shut everyone else out, but he doesn't really like Curly, um, so he doesn't didn't want to do that. So instead, he went he was able to play two cards, did that, and we're gonna move on from there. So I won't go through the minutia of the machine for so much, but um, so it looks like the acorn drops down here, and then it hits another crank. It's the same as this card, except it's an acorn now dropping instead of the initial ball, and that's gonna turn this this screw thing 
which powers, I guess, there's gonna be electricity happening over here now. So that's that's gonna be fun. We'll see what happens, what um, Scoots can do with some electricity. Scoots is also not a big fan of Curly and she has something she wants to do about it. She's gonna use this eraser, nice rubber eraser here to erase that whole part. That's not even part of the machine. Um, that's a right. I think they're leave the game once she does that. Um, so then she's going to replace with that and with that there. So those are her three cards. She still only had three plays. She could have, if, if she hadn't erased, she could have added more. She could have even catalyzed it. But once again, she was in the situation where she's helping Curly. So now we have a bowling ball going in here, um, which I guess got raised up in the past. And that hits this thing which knocks this ball here. I'm gonna actually just shift these so it kind of matches up. And that goes down and turns this. And I guess that turning is gonna cause this to turn. I guess that can stay. And then we have the same old thing. Okay, now we're gonna go to Chopper. Chopper went through and tried to see if he could stick as much over to the left as possible. Um, was only able to get this one card, however. You kind of, I think you're incentivized to go, to start at the, to try and move things to the beginning of the, the machine because those are gonna become safe first as soon as it's finished because three of them turn over at a time. Um, say the machine is finished, someone can uh, supplant you or bop out your, um, bop out your cards, whatnot. So he was able to play all three. It's gonna be, Getting close, uh, players are going to have to spend their turn drawing instead. You can you can discard up to three cards and draw up to six instead of playing cards. That's another option you have because there's no automatic draw mechanism in the game. You have to actually take your turn to do so. Brezza has done a bold move. He's thrown down the catalyst. He was able to put two down here, catalyst over here. He's thinking maybe he will score the most points. So we're going to go back to uh, Curly in a second and he'll have and Brezza will have two points secured, and then we'll, you know, people are going to have time to build on it. In fact, this could go get back to Brezza again before it's all kaput. But let's take a look at our machine, how it is. So we have that, that classic marble going down, turning the crank. That's going to start up this robot, and the robot is going to move forward and run into a book, which causes some scissors to snip a brick. Make that go down, this go up, that knocks our bowling ball hitting our smiley guy into the eight ball, turning the tire right here. It's this spot when it squeezes through the little crack that turns the tire, shows this crank, makes the fish go up, hit that, that scares the squirrel, acorn rolls down. And I feel like I'm gonna change the rules a little bit just to make it more satisfying for me. And we'll maybe, we'll just know that you can't play there, okay? Um, because it goes down here, it doesn't go down to the side. Um, it's just more fun to see it visually instead of a, like a, a storyboard. All right, then that goes down, hits that, starts some energy. The energy, the electricity makes the phonograph go, which causes it to turn, and that makes that turns the tap, which makes the water go there, drops the bucket down onto this, I guess, which goes boom. All right, so the whole point of the machine is to go boom. Let's see what Curly can do with that. And maybe we'll just go, ah, I don't know. I don't know how fine detailed we need to go in this game, but oh. It was gonna get too complicated if I had to remember my uh, visual change. It would have looked better, but harder to play. So I, I put it back. Well, one reason that made it hard was uh, Curly played some splitters. Splitters, they start off with one and then go into two. So we can actually have more machine coming this way now. Um, there's also a splitter there. And then he was he couldn't play his final card. So now what's going to happen is these three are going to get turned over, and those are scored. And then we'll go on a Twigmar, and then the next three will get turned over. Yeah, ba, till it's all turned over. Twigmar was also only able to play two cards, but he got a Catalyst in there. Catalyst count as two, even if it wasn't the one that set it up. So if that gets scored, he needs it to get over to here. That's going to be some points for him. Everything else is scored one. So we'll. Just Flip over another three here. Oh, this we don't get to see the completed machine. I guess we already kind of looked at it. So now it's big curly right here. Um, now it says you can't add cards to the left of the cards flipped. I don't think you can play on top of them either. So if um, Scoots wants to intercede in here, she has to fit into this crack or this crack. You know, she can't. I don't think she could, she would need another kind of splitter. I don't know how she could do it there, but um, so we'll see what she's got. 
And she was able to squeeze in with these two right here. So she's probably gonna be doing all the scoring she's gonna do for the round, because these three are gonna flip. That's gonna give her a total of four points. Curly's got three right now, and um, Bruzza's got two. And we're getting close to where Twigmar is finally gonna get to score, but Chopper's gonna have some say in that. Fortunately, Chopper couldn't fit anything in there, so he just had to draw. If it goes back around, he'll have some cards to use, but I really don't think it's going to. Bummer for Chopper. Bummer. Brazza didn't have much he could do. He could have done some eradication. He could have just taken some points, really, from Twigmar, but he wanted to save those, because once you use those, they're out of the game. You're not going to get them in a, in, a, in a future round, and so he's holding on to it. Twigmar is going to be the highest scorer, I think, this time as a result of that, but... Um, Feels like if he if he keeps his eradicator for later, he'll be able to do more. Um, I think that's going to be it because I doubt Curly can do anything with this card. Nope. And so that's going to flip this over, and we'll go ahead and score it. I mean, you can kind of see how it's going to be. So right now, Twigmar is going to be in first place, and then Curly and Scoots are tied. Looks like actually Curly, Scoots, and Bruzz are all tied with four points each, and then Chopper only has two. No, Chopper has three. That's where we're at. So it's five, four, three. All right, the rules don't really specify what to do with the cards when you're starting a new round. Here's the relevant passage um, over here. After three matches, uh, when machines complete, put the cards in a pile for scoring. The next player may start the next machine with a clean slate. That's what it says to do. Now there's another part with eradicators where it says specifically, do not put them at the bottom of your deck. That makes me think that these cards here, after you score them, go at the bottom of your deck. Now what do you do with your hand? Do you keep your hand? I'm gonna think, I'm gonna assume you do. Three, four, five, six, that's what he would have done. Let's say you do keep your hand, but the cards you used go to the bottom of the deck. So Twigmar is probably going to have to draw on it. Well, actually, he's going to be able to play cards right away, which is nice for him. He's, he's doing pretty well. All right, I'm going to clean this up, and then we'll start on our second machine. Twigmar and Scoots both just opted to draw. Twigmar had two cards in hand. Scoots had one. She couldn't even play that one because it was a catalyst. So Chopper gets to start it off. Uh, we have the ball going here, starting the robot. Robot knocks over this record, looks like, which hits this ball, and the ball's gonna go down somewhere. Reza had a couple rubber things, but he didn't want to use them on Chopper. He wants to save them for one of the point leaders, so he he actually just discarded some cards and drew some more. He, he couldn't really do anything other than erase some of Chopper stuff, so that allowed Curly to come in and get some prime real estate. We'll see if he keeps it. Twigmar's up. All right, I know now I did it wrong with my whole thing with putting the things at the bottom of the deck. It's That's when you discard, you put it at the bottom of the deck. You're just not supposed to score until the end of the game. So I'm gonna keep doing it that way where the cards just recycle the bottom and you, you score after each round since I started that way, but it's not that hard. It still doesn't say what to do with the hand in your hand, though I might've missed that. It's, it's hard to read these rules that closely, um, though your mile, mileage may vary. So. Uh, oh, ah, Twigmar is, is catalyzing it again. So we're gonna go through. He got two in the front, one at the back. He figures he's got the lead. It's, it's in his interest to, to close it down quick. Curly's still doing all right though. Um, we'll see if Scoots can get in there. It's not too complex of a machine and she's got a handful of cards. So chances are she'll be able to do something. Boy, did she have something to say. She used her second eraser on um, the starting card, whatever that was, of Twigmars, that robot there, and she played two of her own to um, get in there. I, this is a splitter, um, but it's not gonna matter because it's just gonna turn over. So it looks like it's just a plug, yeah, like an extension cord, and it causes this boxing glove to go over, hit the ball, ball goes down, starts the robot, hits another ball, it goes down, starts another robot. Uh, this is a new one. The robot knocks a uh, apple into a spoon, which catapults this marble type thing into this thing, which I guess turns it on. It's a button, I suppose. And then starts another boxing glove, hit that record, and then we get another donger. I think the last one was a donger too. So these are gonna flip over. Scoots and Twigmar have assured points now. The Scoots is only gonna be scoring two unless she gets another turn. It's gonna be Chopper's turn. He only has three cards though, so we'll see what he can do with that. 
nothing Chopper could do, so he just let some scoring happen. He actually had an eraser, but he didn't want to just erase someone to erase it. Uh, so he drew cards. He's going to be ready for next time, and he's still scoring some points. Brezza is the one we got to worry about. He's got a fistful of cards now, and we remember he has a couple of erasers. Um, and so he doesn't, this is probably going to be his last chance to score points this round at all. So I hope he does. Let's see. All right, Brezza's ensuring that he ends the round. He inserted in between these two. He's going to erase this one and this one from existence. And, just, uh, and that's going to make it these three. Didn't score the best, but no one really did. Um, so it looks like we got two as our highest score with Scoots, Curly, and Chopper. And then Brezza and Twigmar each only got one. So, uh, he, I guess he figured if he waited, he would just get uh, less score. And one point was the most he was going to get um, with, the, with the cards he happened to have. So, he was just trying to keep the lead from getting too big, too far away from him for our next machine. Sorry, I misspoke. Three was our highest score. So, everyone has six now except for Brezza, who has five. Um, so, we're going in the next round. Curly only has three cards. Same with Twigmar. Scoots has three cards. Chopper has a, a fistful of cards, though, so he's well-positioned to maybe win this. He has the most cards starting off the final machine of Impossible Machine. Uh, Curly gets to play first, however. And Scoots, Twigmar, and Curly each just drew on their turn. They could only put down two cards apiece. They want to start off with a big three. That let Chopper start off with his fistful of cards with the, the big three. That's If no one messes with them, that should be good, but... As well, he, he's no, he no longer has the bottom spot protection. People were kind of leaving him alone before, but now he's tied for first with pretty much everyone else but Brezza. Speaking of which, let's see what he's going to do. We'll look at his cards right now. He's got some electricity. Catalyst can't really use that. Recycling, he can use that one, but that's all he can use. Not super exciting. He might want to just draw two. Actually, draw three. And move on to Curly. I made an error with Chopper, so I took the card back. I, I thought it was a down arrow when it was an up arrow or something like that. Um, Curly's turn. He is a smudging out this card right here. He doesn't have much that he can do, actually, but he's doing that. Most he can do on his turn. He could have discarded some cards and draw, drawn some cards, but he wasn't interested in that. He has a lot of catalysts, which makes it difficult. He has two, uh, maybe two erasers. Probably a fatal mistake for Curly. Twigmar erased his card, threw down three right here. He's at the beginning. If this thing catalyzes, Twigmar's got the game, I think. But I don't know if anyone else is going to let that happen. Least of all, Scoots. Scoots almost just uh, discarded and drew, but she threw a card in there, just hoping she can at least get middle of the point spread somewhere. Uh, Chopper, he did draw two cards rather than play onto this field, because he wasn't you know, going to be able to do anything. That, that brings us to Brezza. Brezza sorely needs some points. He's the, he stands alone in the last place position. The only person not in first place, I guess, is a better way to say it. Or a more positive way, he's the only person in second place. And Brezza started the game off as the ender, I think, if I recall. That was so long ago. Uh, and he's ending it that way. He threw down three off this splitter and got a catalyst in there. So that if this all comes true for him, he might be able to pull off a, a decent score. Again, with these career games, it doesn't necessarily matter as much if you win, but you want to be a high placer, um, which I, I kind of actually prefer for games. Curly's looking weak, but he did get an assured point. He was only able to play one card into it, but that card can't be taken away from him. So he's got one point in there as to Scoots and Twigmar. Uh, so it looks like our leaders are in seven. Twigmar has got some more coming in, and he's next up. So he's going to be getting a high score, I think, here. But uh, he's only got two cards. Let's see what he can do with those. They're both closers. Um, not a lot he can do with that. I don't think there's anything he can do with that. Uh, so I think he's just going to go ahead and draw up. And then he's going to score another two, though. Chopper's going to score one, and so is Brezza. That's going to leave it to Scoots to try and get, eke something out here before it's over. She's going to get shut out otherwise. Well, it looks like she and Chopper will kind of be in the same boat with Curly. And then Brezza. Brezza might pull this off. 
Yeah, Scoots doesn't have any cards that can fit in there. She would need something with an electricity symbol and then something that can end the electricity symbol. She's got some ending ones, but she can't go in there. Again, I could be reading the rules wrong. Could be that she can play here, but it says you can't go to the left of these, so I assume that means these are inviolable and they're, they're permanent like that. So that's going to end it. I guess she could draw a card if she wanted to, but that's going to end it. And so let's look at our score. We got Twigmar. He's going to add another three to his score. So that's going to put him at nine. Bruz is going to add another four, which is going to put him at nine. And then everyone else is going to be tied for third place. So we got a tie for first between Twigmar and Bruzza, and then Chopper, Scoots, and Curly in second. That's going to be weird. How do we do that on, on, on this? Maybe we have to do another, I don't want to do another round. I don't know, I gotta think about this for a second. I feel a little brain dead. So I got a couple options right now. I could have him play another game, which I really don't want to do. I, the tournament needs to keep moving on. Um, I could let them share the win and the second place. Which means I kind of I kind of like that. Um, I could use the here I stand method, where you go back to the the previous turn and see how people are doing there. Which would mean Twigmar's first, Brezza's second, and then Curly and Scoots um, share third, and Chopper is fourth. Um, maybe we'll do that. It's kind of a compromise position and. So one, two, three, four. There we go. So Chapper will still get a reroll chip um, next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament careers. We're going back to it. We're going to see how engineering school worked out for our friends. Before I sign off, I guess I should do a kind of a micro review of this game since I'll probably never talk about it again. Um, it's visually appealing. You can see that for yourself. It either appeals to you or it doesn't. I find it interesting enough. Um, I would have liked it if they hadn't repeated some artwork with this kind of thing. Um, I think if a game is going to hinge on its artwork, which this game definitely does, uh, just do, do it up. There's, there's artists there who can use money and there's Probably some that would maybe do it for free. I don't know that I don't know that business side of it, I suppose. But I would um, definitely say have each card be unique. Maybe not, maybe each person could have an identical deck, but within a deck, don't repeat cards. Um I haven't really thought too much about this game. It's a very light game. This is a game that you would you would play when you're talking. Okay. Uh, a lot of the games we play or that I play are games that you're not gonna have too much conversation outside of the game during the game, right? There's kind of different classes of game. This is more like a traditional card game where you can kind of automate your play, which is fitting uh, to the extent where you can just talk about other things. Um, so, you know, if it's really if, if the, the visual appeal appeals to you, uh, this, you might enjoy picking this game up. You probably can get it fairly cheap. I think I got mine inexpensively. Um, but yeah, that's it. See you next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. And I think we were doing careers, so I'll have to check the um, board. We might have to do some more. It's been a while since I've visited real people. So engineers were on turn 3.8. Looks like the business people are also in 3.8. But maybe I, I might need to redo my math on that. So it might be we're doing a business game as well. I don't know. We'll see. Next time. On the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Turn, we're going to be playing something relating to this English slash Pasha Dash Roulette that we're on. Um, 